We have all of our plastics up on the shelf. On today's show, two teens tackled the bait business. These come in thousand packs. We head to Brainerd to get to know the young brains behind Juice Baits. <laughs> Youngsters make a splash in the great outdoors thanks to life lessons learned at Camp Voyager. And we check out the sport of lumberjacks. Log rolling has people jumping. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota's Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Bill and I welcome you to the show. You know, it seems a lot of kids hit their first jobs right around the time they jump into high school. A couple of Brainerd brothers brainstormed a new twist on one of Minnesota's oldest businesses. Yep, the Barr brothers found their juice. If cleanliness is next to, well, you know. The perfect real life example sits at the corner of Norwood and South 8. Pretty much, yep. Carla Barr runs Anderson's Dry Cleaners, the spot where stains and drips go to die. Carla would never call this job cool. Most days in the middle of the summer, over 100. Gets even hotter back there. But the other family business. Excuse me, Julie. Way in back. All right, this is the back, all the way. Cool might be an understatement. What we got going on here is we have all of our plastics up on the shelf. That's 16-year-old Kyle Barr, half proprietor of all this. The last three are war bugs, and then the middle is craw tubes, and then the front five are thrashers. All names of fishing baits, a bait business brainstorm by Barr and his younger brother. Oh, I love it. I'd die doing it if I could. To understand is to stop back home. Where the Barr brothers. Uh, these are uh, our golly gold war bugs. Spend a lot of time in the basement. And we got, I think these come in thousand packs. So we got packages all up. Raw baits come by mail in big boxed flats. Take them all these boxes and the into the bag so you guys can use them to fish. So much work, yep. the Barr brothers needed help. So they phoned a few high school friends. Sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes it's uh, 20 minutes. They kind of just call. Usually I'm not busy, so then I can just help them. Cole Larkin gets paid not with cold hard cash, but instead soft warm baits. Plastics is helps me restock the tackle box. <laughs> <laughs> Some days. The kids often package their juice baits under the watchful eye of dad. I don't have to wake them up in the morning and tell them to go to work. They they have the passion, so they just they do it. For now, online sales and the display at the cleaners keep the Bar Brothers in business. When they catch up on packaging and orders. I'm going for the big old bucket mouth, large mouth. They spend time on the water doing what kids like this do. Well, we're product testing. This is the product testing day. <laughs> they get together to do what they call research and development. <laughs> There's a good one. Oh, double. Uh-oh. Came it off the juice. Wanted to go. Fish come so fast. Photographer Cole can't even clean his lens. Didn't even have time to clean the lens. No. <laughs> Makes sense these two would be in the fishing biz. They fish a lot. Plaques and trophies might prove that these guys know what they're talking about. This one qualified me for the for the national championship. In 2015, I won the FLW TBF uh, state championship out on Mille Lacs. They've loved it since they were old enough to hold a rod. 
and it's all they think about and it's all they want to do. So the next time you wander through Brainerd, stop at the dry cleaner. Mom will wash your clothes and the kids, they'll try and clean out your wallet. I'm very proud of them. They are just working so hard day and night. Definitely, there's no two kids that know more about fishing than, than they do, so they're perfect for the job. It's the lure of a high school bait business. Coming up next, we head to summer camp where wilderness life inspires adventure. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC dealers. By the yard maintenance-free outdoor furniture. Running Aces Casino Hotel and Racetrack. And by Aluma Craft Boats. Summer camps have a way of inspiring kids, especially when the camp gets the kids into the great outdoors. Travis Frank found a spot where camp prepares kids for life. Surrounded by woods and water, kids at Camp Voyager rise with the morning sun. Rise and shine! It's a great day in the North Woods! Kevin Wood, are you up? Yeah! Kevin Two, are you up? Deb Erdman knows the importance of a healthy camp breakfast. I was three months old first year I came to camp, so it's kind of ingrained in my being, really. And I've never known anything any different. Deb's father, Charlie, started this camp in 1951 with a simple mission to make better people. It's what I call kind of teamwork more than anything. Here, the words team and work really do go hand in hand. Doing for others what you would like to have done unto you, really. John and his sister Deb are second generation owners of this summer boys camp. Up here we continue the program that my f parents ran, which is basically an in-camp program of land and water sports, coupled with uh, wilderness, canoeing, and camping. Chores come first, followed by choices. Just make your own fun. It's really the kids take control and camp here is for the campers. Well, these campers are swimming to Vicki Island and back, which is right around the bend here. Uh, it's a Camp Voyager tradition. Are you tired? Yeah. It's about adventure, taking charge of your own, your own learning, your environment and just taking control, working on self-improvement. Instead of connecting to the internet, kids connect with the outdoors and with each other. Friendships forged here are as special as the Boundary Waters wilderness these campers explore. So you get out in the woods, you learn to appreciate the, the simple life. While one crew sets off on a week-long camping adventure, another camping crew returns. The experience of being out on the trail with friends is uh, something that's pretty pro profound and it's a little difficult to explain. You have to kind of experience. My personal goal is to not be last and I wasn't. My goal was to find something like super cool and I found two things that were super cool. They so. grow stronger and uh, it seems like they laugh a lot more than when they uh, first come to camp. They get something here that they can't get at home. They gain confidence that comes from experience. like it makes sense. You get to choose which one you want to do. Every day is different and every day is fun. And every day these kids get support from the Erdman family and counselors who care. Give thanks for the food that's been prepared for us. 
for a wonderful day here in the Northwoods. Take one down, pass it around. It's a place that people grow up. Camp Voyager is my family's mission. A mission that closes each day with campfire stories. Yesterday that we had to take a five hour detour. Camp Voyager, a wilderness adventure camp surrounded by water and good friends. Still ahead, find out how to get started in lumberjack sports. And later, meet the Koi Kids, brothers with a big interest in fish. Closed captioning is brought to you by Maple Grove Lock and Safe, your premier Liberty safe dealer. One of Minnesota's oldest outdoor endeavors happens to be one of the newest, too. Log rolling just keeps rolling on. Up, 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 up. Up and over, up and over. Sometimes life is better when you just roll with it. Roll a log, that is. Nice. Pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter. Pitter -patter. Pitter -patter. Pitter -patter. Pick your feet up, pick your feet up. Abby Heschler and her sister Lizzie were taught this life lesson at a very young age. Yep, faster. That's it. There you go. Little steps, little steps, little steps. I think I probably started log rolling as soon as I could walk and swim at the same time. Push the little amp. Well, I grew up in a family of world champion log rollers. My mom is a seven-time world log rolling champion. She not only passed on her love of log rolling, but also her love of teaching log rolling to me and sharing it with others. Woo! And I won my first world championships as, as a five-year-old in six and under. <laughs> So what do two log rolling sisters do with their unusual up, 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 skills? Up, up, up and over, up and over. I, I loved teaching my friends. I started a program through the Park and Rec Board. Up, up, up and over, up and over. Nice recovery. Good job. Log rolling was a sport people really loved, but they didn't have access to it because of the equipment. Today, log rolling is considered a sport, but there was a time when log rolling was a workplace skill. It's actually originated from men driving logs to sawmill towns and they when they'd step on the floating logs they spawn and they had to learn how to stay out of the ice cold water it was survival for them nothing is really changed it's really a very pure authentic sport not much has changed nice however the equipment is a little heavy a 500 pound cedar log so the ladies invented their own training tool. So the key log is a 65 pound uh, synthetic log rolling log that you fill with water. And then you just slide on these trainers. So now with the trainers, they can actually stay on long enough to learn, get kind of the balance, get their muscle memory down, start to build their footwork. Nice. Really create a progression to learning and they're learning so much faster. Okay, let's see how fast I can learn, or how fast I don't learn. That as a beginner, your goal isn't to make the log spin, it's to stay on top by taking small little fast steps and stay right up on top and almost keep the log from spinning. You're trying to keep it under your control. <laughs> Look, I think I've got it down. <laughs> there you go, that's fine. Just get, yeah, just get used to that. Look at the log's moving so fast you can't even see it moving. Fast feet are happy feet, hence the sport of log rolling keeps growing. Nice, there you go, that's good. Log rolling feels kind of risky at first and feels like a challenge, but it's still safe and you're doing it with a group of people and you're just right here on the beach. So it's super easy, you can just step right into the water and hop on the log. Nice, dig your heel in, Abby, dig your heel in. And when you're having fun, you let the good times roll. So I think everyone loves this challenge and it's, it's really fun to see that so many different types of people are learning how to log roll. Get control of the log, get control. Steady your core, Allison. There you go, yep. All right, Minneapolis Log Rolling Championship, here I come. Whoa, might be in 2025, but I'll get there. Still ahead, the business of fish. We meet the Koi Kids. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Connecticut. Mountain Dew, Radco Truck Accessories, 
Bent Creek Golf Course. And by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. Today's Minnesota Bound Classic is all about kids who like fish. My dad, Ron Shera, meets up with the Koi Kids. Yeah, this used to be a horse farm and a motorcycle shop. We gutted this building and built all this. Yeah, we're the only one like this in the state and like five state area around us. Meet the Swanson brothers, Mike Most and Devin, who live on a small acreage man. near Scandia, Minnesota. <laughs> It looks, it looks really complicated, but it's not really. Easy to say when you're the head honchos of a growing fishy business. Like in this tank, those black discs on the bottom, those are bottom drains. So it goes into there and that's a vortex chamber. Disc, so drains, and vortexes? And is this new teenage speak? And the water gets intake from the surface center and it goes into the bead filters, which are, which are like a pool filter and then goes out through a UV sterilizer, which kills like all algae. Now meet the Koi Kids. We run it. We do all the day-to-day -day, day -day operations and you know, catching the fisher people, cleaning filters, feeding koi, we, we do all that. Yes, they are teenage importers of koi, a Japanese fish with a yen for swimming into money. She's got to float for about 15 minutes to get the temperature the same. Now, is it a male or female? That's a female. What makes this so valuable to the Japanese? I mean, they don't eat it. This is their show dog. Yeah. This is their show dog. Or yeah. like show a horse, too. Yep, or thoroughbred racing horse. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is just for show? Mm -hmm. Yep. We probably let her go. It's been about 15 minutes. Importing a large fish with a $4,000 price tag is nothing new to the Koi Kids. Yeah, we're the largest facility that imports from Japan in the Midwest. We ship these all over the country, too. They're all similar. These are between $250 and $600. But yeah, it's all based on size and pattern. What began as a hobby so, put that down. has become a full-time job, caring for thousands of expensive fish with very strange names. Do all of these patterns have names? Yes. yes. They do. Like, like what's that? Yamato Nishiki. What? Yamato Nishiki. This is a Kujaku right here. It's got the silver shading on the scales. And it's got like a Kohaku pattern. How many different color colorations are there? I think there's like over 200. Really? Yeah. While Mike and Devin run the operation, their parents provide homeschooling and financial help. I'm very impressed with my boys. They learned at an early age that if you want something, you have to work for it. And that's kind of spilled over into this business. They're good at raising fish, but they still don't make their beds or clean their rooms. <laughs> Dealers always want to talk with me when we're in Japan, but our translator tells them, no, deal with the two boys. They're the owners. I'm the banker. <laughs> I'll feed the guys behind you, sir. We're doing double what I thought we'd do. So if people, the word's getting out. People are finding us. Um, it's people come, they want to buy one fish, end up buying four, just because our quality fish is so good. For six hours a day, the koi kids tend to their finny treasures. I'm not really working, it's more just watching the fish, because everything's pretty easy to maintain in here. Koi may live a century or more, an unusual lifespan for a fish. The oldest one was 236 years old. Once a year, the young fish importers go to Japan to wheel and deal for more koi. Hopefully we can stay with it, make a lot of money, get a lot of good koi. I handle all the internet and all the paperwork. I do koi health, stuff like that. Carry that up there. You seem like you get along pretty good. Yeah, it's just a show we put on. <laughs> do the koi boys have future plans? To be able to retire at an early age. So there you go, proof that everyone has their own hobby. And that about does it for us today. We'll see you back here next week. In the meantime, don't forget to introduce a kid to the great outdoors.
transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook.